All right, guys. In today's video, we're going to be using the uh, tiermaker.com and we're going to be discussing uh, who I think is going to potentially have the best offenses in the NFL this season. Uh, starting off the list, we have the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, they have Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Joe Mixon. Uh, they just got Orlando Brown for their left tackle. Uh, their offensive line is on the come up with Ted Karras so, and Alex Kappa. I think that they this year could potentially be the best offense in the league if their offensive line steps up. Uh, over the past two years, their offensive line has been the downfall of them not winning a Super Bowl. So I have them as being one of the best. Uh, the Tennessee Titans, um, they have Derrick Henry in a good offensive line, but uh, with shaky quarterback play, I feel like there will be a very mid, uh, very mid offense. Uh, up next, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars, who have Trevor Lawrence, who is ascending and getting better. They signed Calvin Ridley in the offseason. Uh, he has Evan Ingram and all kinds of weapons, and he keeps getting better and better. Travis Etienne's playing well. I think they're going to be a really, really good offense this season. Next up is the Houston Texans. Uh, the Texans um, have a rookie quarterback with Bryce Young. They're coming in with Damian Pierce, who I think is an absolute stud. So I think I don't think they'll be horrible. I really don't. I don't think they'll be below average. I think they'll be a, a mid, a mid uh, offense for this season. So I'm going to put them at the very mid. Next up, we have the uh, Indianapolis Colts. The Colts are sitting with Anthony Richardson, and this one's interesting to me because uh, the Colts have Jonathan Taylor, and now they have Anthony Richardson, who is like Tim Tebow to me, the way he plays. Like, the guy is just an athletic freak. And I think that he could take that offense up a notch and set it down. The way Matt Ryan played, Matt Ryan didn't play well uh, within that offense. And Anthony Richardson, he opens it up. He, Anthony Richardson opens up another level with his running ability. So I'm going to put them at an above average offense. Next up, we have the Green Bay Packers. Uh, the Packers lost Aaron Rodgers and are starting their first year with the Jordan Love era. And to me, I'm not impressed. I think that uh, if Jordan Love was as good as they thought he was coming out of college, uh, he would have played above Aaron Rodgers one of those seasons. They would have gave him at least a chance. So I'm going to put them below average. I don't think it's going to be uh, anything special this year from the Green Bay Packers. We have the Minnesota Vikings up next. Minnesota Vikings have Kirk Cousins. At quarterback, who is the epitome of mid. He's not bad, but he's not great. He's a game manager, in my opinion. He does what he needs to do to win. Um, but they do have Justin Jefferson. Um, Justin Jefferson is one of the top two receivers in the league. Uh, led the league in receiving last season. Very easily could do it again. But one player can't do it all. They just released Alvin Cook, and they think Alvin uh, Alexander Madison can run the show. So we're going to see what they do with that. So we're going to put them... And an above average offense, they're not going to be really good, I don't believe, but I think they're above average. Uh, next is the Chicago Bears with Justin Fields. Uh, he's taking over. He's looking like he's going to take over as the best rushing quarterback in the league. But just because he can run doesn't mean that they're going to be great. So I think that we're going to put the Chicago Bears at below average offensively. This one is interesting to me, and I kind of like this one. The Detroit Lions, uh, they used, I believe, the 12th pick on Jameer Gibbs. And that's extremely high for a running back. Like that never happens. So I'm going to put uh, the D short lines are going to be really good offensively with him and uh, Almond Ross St. Brown. It's going to be a really exciting offense to watch. Uh, next, we have the, <laughs> the Washington Commanders, who to me are just going to be a complete mess. I think they're going to be playing for the first overall pick next season. I'm going to be putting the Washington Commanders at below average. Um, here we go. Okay. So we're sitting right here with the Philadelphia Eagles who kind of got a steal. If you think about it in the off season, they just got Deandre Swift for nothing like Deandre Swift. Like when, if you watched hard knocks the season before they were talking about how Deandre Swift was him, he was going to be the next great running back in the league. And then he gets hurt and they go out and just draft Jameer Gibbs and, and have him as an afterthought. So I think that, uh, Deandre Swift's going to be a little healthy. I think he's going to be um, like hungry to prove himself this season. And Jalen Hurts is just a complete beast. They have A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. I think the Eagles potentially could be the best offense in the league this season. 
let alone their defense. They're going to have so many opportunities with the ball because their defense is going to be turning it over. Next up, we're sitting with the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, who I don't really believe in. I mean, I'm a Bengals fan, so I'm kind of biased here, but I don't think Kenny Pickett's it. I really don't. Kenny Pickett and um, Najee Harris, George Pickens, like they have good players, but they don't have – I think they're still too young. I don't think they have it together just yet. So I'm going to put them in a below average offense, somebody I'm not really worried about. Um, Dallas Cowboys, they finally turned the rock over to Tony Pollard for the season. And I'm, I'm kind of excited about it. Uh, I think Tony Pollard's going to be great. I think he can be a top five fantasy running back this season. If uh, he's the only – if they don't sign anybody else, he's going to be a stud. Uh, they have CeeDee Lamb, Dak Prescott throwing the ball 40 times a game, above average offensive line. I think they're going to be really, really good this season. I think they'll be – let me just switch this up. I'm going to put them there and put the Cowboys there because I feel like that's going to be how this is sitting right here. The New York Giants had some big additions. They have Isaiah Hodgins, who over the last couple of games of last season showed himself to be possibly a wide receiver one. Uh, he had the highest win uh, rate on his routes at the end of the season. Um, they signed Darren Waller. That's a huge upgrade for Daniel Jones. Anytime Daniel Jones is in trouble, he's going to have that safety net of, of a huge Darren Waller in the middle. Saquon's on a contract year, so they're going to try to. He's going to try to show out. Offensive line's getting better every year with Andrew Thomas. I think the uh, New York Giants offense is going to be really, really good. Uh, Carolina Panthers. Hmm. I might have messed up earlier in the video. If you hear this, um, this is me correcting myself. I believe I said that uh, Bryce Young went to the Texans, and I believe Bryce Young went to the uh, Panthers, and CJ Stroud went to the Texans. So I got that reversed there. So those of you listening, correcting myself, make sure to say something in the comments about it. So uh, Carolina Panthers with Bryce Young, rookie, number one overall pick. Got rid of Christian McCaffrey. I think they got rid of Deontay Foreman too, which is crazy to me. Uh, I think that they're going to be uh, in a complete rebuild still. I think they're going to try to add talent around them. So we're going to move the Carolina Panthers all the way down to below average. And this is terrifying right here for me. The Buccaneers, I don't know if you've seen what's going on in OTAs. They're showing the quarterback battle with Baker Mayfield. And it is it is a sight to see. That is it's some horrendous quarterback play. So I'm, I'm worried about Mike Evans on the year having Baker because, I mean, he couldn't get it done with Odell and Jarvis Landry. So I just don't know. I'm going to put them right behind the Steelers right there and below average. Oh, I like this one right here. So this, uh, the New Orleans Saints have Derek Carr now. And I think Derek Carr is going to get the offense right. Uh, I think he's going to be a big upgrade for him. They uh, didn't utilize Alvin Kamara correctly last season, in my opinion. So I think that uh, the Saints are going to be on a come-up year. I think they're going to be above average. I don't think they're going to be really good, but I do think they'll be above average. Arizona Cardinals, they're coming in with a hurt Kyler Murray. Uh, they're kind of – you can tell they're kind of – in a rebuild mode now, they got they uh, got rid of DeAndre Hopkins. I think that they know that the season is going to be a a wash, so I'm going to put them all the way down at the bottom. I think they're possibly going to be the in contention for the number one pick. Uh, Seattle Seahawks coming off a good year with Geno Smith's play. Um, they have DK Metcalf still. Kenneth Walker's a monster. Like he's a really really good running back. He has like uh, shades of beast mode in my opinion. So I think they will be an above average offense. I don't think they'll be super good. I don't think they're elite. I, I don't feel like uh, Seahawks have been that in a while, but I think they'll be above average. I think they're a, an above 500 football team on this season. Uh, San Francisco 49ers, they have some weapons. They have George Kittle, at tight end, top two, three tight end in the league. Christian McCaffrey is the best running back, hands down, in my opinion. Uh, Debo Samuel at receiver, they have weapons everywhere. And the cool thing about the, the 49ers, if you're a 49ers fan, you're in a good situation because you're in a situation where your quarterbacks are both good. Like you have Trey Lance, who's probably more naturally talented than Brock Purdy. But Brock Purdy's a monster. Like that guy, he, what was it, 303 in the playoffs? Like, y'all are in a good spot. I think y'all are potentially going to be the best offense in the league. I don't think you're, you're going to be as good as my Bengals. That's pro probably a little biased of me to say. But San Francisco, definitely a top two and three offense. Next up, we have the Cleveland Browns. Uh, I think uh, Deshaun Watson's going to have – he's going to try to have a comeback season, uh, win comeback player of the year for this season right here. You know how everything's going with him in the offseason and uh, with the legal trouble that he was in. And uh, this is his first full season back. He's got a true wide receiver, one in Amari Cooper and Nick Chubb at running back. So above, off, uh, above average offensive line, one of the top offensive lines. So 
they have everything they need to be a great offensive team. I'm going to put them uh, at the the very end of really good, like right at above average, really good. They're going to have to prove it. They're they're somebody. They're a team that hasn't done it. They're going to have to prove it. So this one right here may change after we record this video because DeAndre Hopkins was actually uh, visiting with the Patriots today. And according to the, the reports, it went extremely well. So if DeAndre Hopkins signs with the Patriots, I believe that they're going to be a really good offense with him and Ramondae Stevenson. Uh, I feel like their quarterback is going to be a game manager. I don't think he's going to throw the ball 40 times a game, but I do think that he's going to do enough to help them win. So I'm going to put them – Above the uh, Browns right there and going to be really good if they get DeAndre Hopkins. If not, actually, let's go ahead and just do it like this. Let's put them at the top of above average on offense because I think they will be if they get DeAndre Hopkins. Okay, so the, the Miami Dolphins have Tyreek Hill, fastest receiver in the league, Jalen Waddell, who is arguably the second fastest receiver in the league, Tua, who throws absolute bombs, who we all saw last season when they were all together, it was just, it was, they were just scorching everybody. And reports are coming out that the Miami Dolphins are planning on hopefully signing Dalvin Cook. Like their head coaches, um, you know, not letting anybody know if they really are or not, but it seems like that's going to be the landing spot. And if they do get Dalvin Cook, they're going to be potentially the best offense in the league. So I'm going to put them at the end of that top four. And here we go with the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills are in a weird spot. They canceled the rest of their training camp or mini camp because of the internal conflict going on. Stefan Diggs didn't want to show up. Him and Josh Allen were having words. Uh, Josh Allen said he's going to try his best to get him more involved. Just typical wide receiver diva stuff. You know, every good wide receiver one sometimes has that diva moment. So to me, I think everyone knows that they should be one of the best offenses in the league, but with all the drama going on, I'm going to put them at the top of going to be really good. I'm not going to put them in that elite tier because of that. I'm going to put them right there. If they settle everything, they would be right in here somewhere. But for now, we're going to put them right there. It's going to be really good. Uh, next up, we have the uh, the Chargers. The Chargers have uh, Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler, like they're just complete stacks on offense. Their offense carries them. Everyone knows they're going to be really good. Could be top one of the top offenses in the league if Justin Herbert takes that next step. Not going to put them up there because I don't want to put too many teams on. Potentially could be the best. Like they're going to have to prove it. But um, they're up there. The Austin Eckler could be do another season where he has twenty touchdowns, carries everything. Here we go with the Kansas City Chiefs, defending Super Bowl champions, Patrick Mahomes. Could possibly go down as the best quarterback ever. He already has two MVPs, two Super Bowls, two uh, Super Bowl MVPs. I think he's my age. I'm pretty sure he's 28. Like, he's young. He's still got another pop, pop 10, 12 years in the league. So, I think you you have to put them as the best offense in the league. I think that there's no denying it. I think, uh, especially me being a Bengals fan, you, we, have to, we have to beat them in order to uh, crown ourselves as the top offense in the league. Uh, next up, we have the Oakland Raiders. Jimmy Garoppolo failed his physical. I'm pretty sure they're going to move on from him. They do have Devontae Adams and Josh Jacobs, but with the quarterback play, um, how it is, and not sure who it's going to be, we're going to put them at mid. I don't, I don't, I'm not high on the Oakland Raiders this season. Next up, we have or Las Vegas Raiders, whatever they are now. Uh, next, we have the Baltimore Ravens. I think that they take a huge jump this season and could potentially be one of the best offenses in the league. I'm going to go ahead and put them at the back end of that. Lamar Jackson, Odell, and J.K. Dobbins healthy, good offensive line, Mark Andrews. Like, they have weapons. They have, and they know it. And their defense is great. They're going to have all kinds of opportunities with the ball. They're going to be rushing, controlling the clock. They More than likely, the Ravens will be the top rushing offense in the league again this season if everybody stays healthy. Um, last but not least, we have the New York Jets with Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers um, is saying he has is having the best time of his life with the New York Jets, and I believe it. Uh, I was watching a podcast today that was talking about um, other people that have came from Green Bay to New York to play football and just a different kind of atmosphere it is. And uh, if you're looking at Aaron Rodgers having um, Garrett Wilson, who was the offensive rookie of the season, and I feel like it's going to be – I don't feel like it will be on the same level as Devontae Adams-Aaron Rodgers' connection, but it's going to be close. 
I feel like that's going to be his guy. He's going to get all the targets as well as Brees Hall. Brees Hall was a monster before he got hurt. He he was probably going to be the offensive rookie of the year. And they're on the same team, which is it's crazy to me. So I think they're going to be really, really good. I don't think they'll be one of the top offenses. I don't think they're going to be better than any of these. But I definitely put them right there. I feel like they could have a huge monster season, make a deep playoff run. So this is it. This is my list for the day. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to try to do some more videos later on. But let me know what you guys think. Uh, be sure to comment. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you can. We're trying to grow our best. And I'll catch you all in the next one.